Hey guys, cool. So um, I'm here with Courtney. Now Courtney is an exercise physiologist. Um, if you don't know, if you haven't seen me before, my name is Dan, I'm from True T and also do some work with real body movement. Um, but I'm here with Courtney from uh, her physiology, so health, exercise and rehab. Um, and she's a women's health specialist. So um, mm -hmm. Courtney goes through and obviously with women's health, we can't just treat uh, women like small men, obviously there are very different problems. There are very different challenges um, and everybody needs to be treated differently in that regard. Um, obviously specializing in pre postnatal stuff and obviously the, the challenges of menopause. So that's today's discussion, um, talking about menopause and um, the effect of it and how we can sort of balance out the challenges that arise around uh, as we age and as women age are aging into the menopause stages and how that fluctuates between training and nutrition and recovery and how the body sort of copes with it. So um, thanks for having us guys. Thanks for joining. Um, let's get into it. So Courtney, just uh, talking to you for a sec, just understanding your sort of background. How do you sort of integrate with using exercise um, in a really general sense on, um, like you said, um, on your website, you've got using exercise to help prevent and manage sort of chronic and complex health conditions for women. Yes. Well, exercise, as we EPs describe it as medicine, basically, because there are a lot of different health factors that you can actually, uh, or physiological factors, should we talk about, um, that you can change using exercise prescription depending on what you're going through and what type of exercise that you're actually using. So as an EP, we use different forms of exercise to help manage symptoms of chronic or complex health conditions or even prevent long term. So um, the risk of developing chronic or complex health conditions, um, depending on what your current health is like anyway. So it really all depends on what condition you have, symptoms you're getting, but we use it more like like medicine. Like this is what you're getting. Let's do something about it rather than just for like a, basically for a physique point of view, which is what most people tend to associate exercise with. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously stepping into our gym, we've got a, a functional background where we're trying to get people started again. Um, you know, they mm -hmm. may have injuries or, or something like that, um, or they've never stepped foot inside a gym before. And just that reconnecting with the body. So that exercise and just learning how to move again is really important for challenging the, um, the system and sort of getting away from the whole um, using drugs as medicine and actually sort of integrating into exercise and medicine. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, so talking today about the, the basics, so like understanding what menopause is, why it happens, all that sort of stuff. So obviously we've got women going through certain phases and, you know, the period cycle and all that sort of stuff. How is that changing as they get old? Yeah. So you basically, uh, obviously women get their menstrual cycle when they're in their early teens. Oh, if you're really lucky or not so lucky, it's a bit later. Um, and then obviously you have that until probably roughly around 52 is where you start sort of hitting that perimenopause is what they call it, which is where you start to develop the symptoms that menopause is coming. Um, and then when you've actually stopped having your period for um, a period of time, then you've hit menopause and you no longer are uh, basically no longer fertile I guess um that's the point of it really and your hormones are changing uh throughout that whole cycle which is why you actually hit menopause because your estrogen levels progesterone levels are all changing and pretty much dropping so you'll experience a whole bunch of symptoms around that bodily changes um it's really great <laughs> super Which fun being a lucky being a yeah all the time. yeah so just on the, those changes and all that sort of stuff, like we're talking about the menstrual cycle and then no menstrual cycle. Obviously, coming from a guy's perspective, I've heard about early menopause. I've heard about the, the symptoms sort of kicking in early. It doesn't necessarily need to be sort of early 50s, can happen sooner or later or whatever. Um, how does that sort of translate across? Like, how do we know that someone's actually being many uh, perimenopausal or is actually menopausal? And how do we, especially as a coach or as, you know, um, as, a, as a guy, how do I sort of um, help women find find out what their symptoms are and how it's going to affect them? Yeah, well, every single woman has a uh, single woman has going to have different symptoms. So um, the biggest, I think, common ones that you would see are those ones like the hot flashes, um, the moody, like the mood swings, but mostly emotional, like quite emotional all the time. Um, poor sleep 
you'll start to, that's a massive sign that I see usually as well. Um, even just things like sometimes memory can also be an issue as well. They'll start to um, just have a little bit of like, like brain fog type memory um, issues. So those are probably the most common that you see, but there's also like the weight gain is a thing. Um, then their menstrual cycle will be affected. So they'll be really irregular in menstrual cycle or they might have um, maybe not irregular in a sense of like, not occurring monthly, but it might be like one cycle might be just like super crazy and like heat's heavy and then the next one will be really, really light and then the one after that might be like just in the between and then you might miss one and then it's coming, like it's just really all over the place in terms of that. Um, you might go through like a period of two or three cycles where you don't actually have the menstrual cycle and then you get one again. Um, so it's it's really like all over the place with that. But symptoms in terms of like that's a pretty big symptom for females to know that they're starting to hit that um and if they're open enough to tell you that you'll know um otherwise all those other symptoms are usually the sign of like they're coming towards menopause the perimenopause or as we call it yeah and i'm obviously we're mentioning things like mood swings mood changes um slowing metabolism or sort of you know this weight gain type thing obviously this is pointing towards this hormonal sort of fluctuation um and as you were mentioning before the the changes in the hormones as as they're moving through the whole um through the whole cycle yeah for me as a coach um i need to know about this stuff um because because you know we're looking at hormonal changes and this is going to affect training and nutrition and recovery and like how we're sort of pacing ourselves through exercise. So there's a whole bunch of stuff we could get into on another topic about, you know, training through the menstrual cycle. Um, And there's a whole bunch of research into that, but with the menopause, if there's so many mood changes and if there's so many like hormonal fluctuations, how do we really manage that? And just starting on the basics from me as a coach, like how do I help a woman through her training cycle and through the, the periodization of her training the strong phases, the the endurance phases, whatever we're working with, if she's gaining these these fluctuations in hormones? Yeah, so great question because from a uh, medical point of view, a lot of one, most people are going to be like, oh, hormone replacement therapy is your first option because that's going to stop the hormones from dropping, but um, well, help in a sense. But yeah, long-term, you can't really do much about it, so you kind of have to work with it in the best possible way. Um, I like to educate a lot of my clients based around all the other lifestyle factors that will impact how your body is responding to all of that. So stress is huge. Stress is like massive in terms of um, the weight gain part of thing anyway. And because it's so closely linked with estrogen and progesterone as well, you kind of really need to manage cortisol levels um, because that's also going to help. I'm assuming most of the ladies that you have are going to be more like worried about their weight <laughs> um, as a, from a coach's point of view. And that's obviously going to affect weight anyway in people who aren't even menopausal so that you've got that issue um because usually the impact they have on gut health is also affected most of the time through menopause like you'll find that a lot of the women will have like uh gi disturbances so most of them get a little bit constipated (laughs) um based on the estrogen's effect on the soft tissue within um the bowels so you start to experiencing that as well which then is an issue with like nutrition, nutrient absorption. Um, you know, it, it's also affecting uh, other hormone balance as well because your hormones have a big, huge impact in where they come from in the gut as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so that lifestyle issues like nutrition, uh, sleep, trying to get on top of the sleep, like all of those other lifestyle factors that usually you would focus on have become way more important because they're going to help reduce the the impact that these changes in hormones have and hopefully stop them from dropping more than what they need to because some of them are actually related to the menstrual cycle but others you still do produce like little bits of hormones throughout other tissues in your body right so you want to try and keep all of those other aspects under wraps um so that's not as bad so those are the type of things I would look at um, educating around that and looking at what else in their life is an issue that we could fix that will help um, with what we're actually trying to work towards, which is being interrupted through menopause, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Um, and that kind of leads into like you're talking about with the nutrition. I think it gets sort of 
Um, and I know there's two extremes to the conversation where people talk about calories in, calories out versus yeah. certain um, nutritional style. And every, uh, you know, the argument there is that, you know, insulin is really important. All these other hormones are important. Um, you know, calories in, calories out. It's not just about eating less and moving more. I think that's a simplified version, but understanding that the basal metabolic rate and how the body processes or metabolizes energy um, takes into account all the hormonal fluctuations as well. So understanding that the basal metabolic rate will be changing as we get up, as we get older for guys as well as, yeah. as well as women. Um, but how would that sort of fluctuate as well? How does that change through um, the menopausal stage? Like we, we can talk about the slowing metabolism. How do we navigate that? How do I, as a, as a nutrition coach or as even just a habits based nutrition coach, um, how do I help women navigate the, caloric changes as they're entering into into menopause yeah so um i'm a really big advocate for like health food and nutritional food rather than calorie in calorie out like eat what you want just count your calories and count your macros um, mostly because the other physiological factors that are happening in menopause like gut issues uh, sleep disturbances high cortisol are going to be affected by the type of food that you choose to eat so if you are going to calorie in calorie out count for heaps of treat food but you're still in your calories and it's not really going to do anything for those other health factors that are actually causing more menopausal menopausal problems um, so you, you really need to focus on like the nutritional quality of the food however because of the metabolic changes that actually happen in terms of like aging right um, I tend to push a lot more protein in these women so you also are going through menopause which means muscle mass building muscle mass now and maintaining it is so much harder so you need to almost like double how much protein you're taking just because you just need as much as you possibly can to actually grow the muscle and maintain what you have and because we all know more muscle you have metabolic results you know you get better metabolism you know all about that as a coach i'm sure you're probably educating everyone on that anyway um and you also become really quite sensitive to like carbohydrates because you can't metabolize it or your, your insulin sensitivity changes. So I do tend to educate a little bit more around increasing protein, which uh, my clientele is quite, quite clinical and healthy pop versus like training for like performance. Um, so most of them don't eat enough protein anyway. So when I'm trying to increase it, probably to what they should normally be having, that's kind of hard enough as well. Um, however, pushing for that, changing the way that they're using their carbohydrate sources um, is also like lowering that a little bit more is usually kind of the guide I gave. I don't give numbers. I just say, try and do this, implement these kind of rules. Um, and then I also do focus a lot more on their gut health and how they're actually, um, how their GI tract is working. So we're trying to like get regular bowel movements happening. How's that all going? Um, we want to focus on being able to use the nutrients that you're actually eating. So if they're not going to the toilet regularly or they're really bloated, a lot of them are going to have bloating issues. Um, we focus on more of like the get gut friendly diet this is pretty much in fashion now, but, you know, looking at like any inflammatory based foods as well as like um, foods that are going to help keep yeah. their gut a bit healthier. Right, rather so than... Sorry. That, um I was listening to a podcast the other day. Um, it was the Rich Roll podcast, but talking about the microbiome, super important stuff. And um, you bring up sorry, about, talking about what was that? Talking about the microbiome, so the, oh, yeah, yeah. the gut and the, the the bacteria in the gut and the balance of the bacteria in the gut and how that sort of processes. Yeah. And understanding that you know you know up to seventy percent of the immune system resides in the gut, and so that balance is going to play with all our hormones. You know, on the other side of cortisol. Um, to control that, you've also got serotonin and that's made in the gut as well. So yeah. 90% of that is made in the gut. So we're talking about, you know, mood swings. We're talking about the hormonal changes, balancing that out with food, um, like you're saying, is really important. And yeah. I think the, the push recently that I've kind of found, and I feel like it's a really good sort of push, is getting away from just counting specific macros um, and focusing much more on the... Um, on the micro, as you said, on the nutrients, on, the, mm. on the, all the vitamins, all the minerals, getting as much a variation of, of plant 
um, intake as possible so that the microbiome, the, the bacteria and everything that resides in the gut is, is super alive, super healthy and taking care of you as much as possible. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and this is what I'm trying to um, help educate our clients on as well, especially when it comes to habit-based stuff. It's, it's always like, let's track what you're eating, not in terms of numbers and all that sort of stuff, but let's just focus on what you are eating for, let's say a week or two weeks. Let's let, let's add in something that's going to help us on top of that. Yeah. So make it really simple, but let's add in some more plants. Um, Cause you can't really go wrong with adding more plants it's calorically. Um, and obviously the health of the gut as well. Um, yeah. It's going to help us sort of balance out through menopause and, and, and um, yeah. through those later stages, super beneficial. Um, but we're also talking now about, you know, um, we're talking about the training. You were talking about protein and the amount of protein and how um, how much how it's harder to um, to put on muscle and maintain muscle because of the change in the hormones. So, should the training program therefore focus more on a, a, a hypertrophy um, focus rather than your standard sort of hit training or you know anything else like that? Like, should we change the focus more into the strength style of of work? Um, yeah, well, I think it's, that's really more important to, to each individual because the idea is that, um, like if you're talking hit training in regards to like zero resistance based training in that hit circuit, like I do hit training with resistance exercises, not sure what you guys program there, but, um, you definitely want to be building the muscle in any way that person likes to do it. So if that's hit training with resistance work in it, that's fine. If it's strength work, it's strength work. Like these women are just going to, they just need stimulus for muscle growth um, in order to basically help metabolic rate. They're going to also think about like uh, muscle breakdown or sarcopenia, we call it, which is like breaking down muscle. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to start happening much quickly, much more quickly at this age. Um, we're also looking at osteoporosis because as you know, when you go through menopause, estrogen has a huge impact on bone growth and bone regeneration. So you will drastically um, uh, decline in your bone mineral density at this point in your life. And you need to basically try and offset that as best as you can. So if you can grow some muscle and stimulate that long-term health is optimal there. And we're also looking more to do with like functional strength. So if you're losing strength, you're going to start to lose function in your daily life, which then puts you at risk later on for losing independence. So that's kind of how I target uh, strength or training um i definitely push like strength and hypertrophy over um that like hit training but in saying that cardiovascular disease is like a huge um comorbidity of <clears throat> anyone with estrogen issues like it you increase the risk of that so that's where aerobic training is going to come in as well so a really good combination of both is important however you're also feeling a bit crap so hit training sometimes isn't ideal um you hot flashes and body temperature is a problem for these women. So offsetting heat can sometimes be quite hard. Um, and therefore the heat training can actually be more draining than what you intend for it to be and don't get as good results anyway. So it's really dependent on the person's symptoms, what they're struggling with the most, what their goals are, what's going to keep them training more. Um, but yeah, I would, if I had to pick one, I'd be choosing resistance training. Hypertrophy work. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's kind of cyclical. Hey, like everything kind of affects everything else. So your nutrition is obviously going to play a massive, yep. role, but then your training plays a role and then your recovery plays a role. Um, your heat regulation plays a role. Like it's all kind of con contributing to each other. Um, yeah. 100%. You know, and obviously the, the human body is a complete system that works um, really effing well, but it's yeah. hard to sort of balance it all out and do what, know what to do is the right thing um a lot of the time so uh, like you said like being strong however you like and i think you you just brought up a really good point there programming the way people like is really important mm. um, and doing something that people enjoy because adherence is really the key whether it comes to nutrition or training or you know whatever the program is adherence is the number one key factor right so um talking yep. about the the training regimen and the nutrition and all that sort of stuff and like you said like trying to maintain muscle um trying to grow a bit of muscle if we can um which is going to be challenging obviously that takes a lot of recovery um are there any sort of specific recovery principles that would be extra important during during the menopausal cycle um 
specifically, I just encourage women to get their protein in pretty quickly after their session. Their, um, the opportunity for uh, growth, muscle growth in for women, like that optimal window is literally like three hours after their training session. Men have this for like 12 hours, like so lucky. We don't. So that is really important. Um, in terms of recovery, there's definitely a component to just active recovery. I'm a huge advocate for that because, mate, women just don't do enough of it, to be quite honest. They're notorious for just smashing out workouts and then trying to do more and more and more because they're so worried about weight gain. Um, that sometimes I do try and I do try and educate like sometimes less is more in a sense. Like you know, too much high intensity training all the time is spiking cortisol, extra weight gain. It's like you're just not doing yourself a favor. Um, so I do recommend that, and that's how I talk. Kind of try and get my women to do cardio, mm -hmm. active recovery, rather than like high intensity training all the time. Um, but in terms of recovery, um, most of them are pretty good at that. It's just like really making sure that your recovery is coming down to like the nutrition and the sleep, part, um, hydration, things like that are lifestyle components rather than any other specific things that I talk about anyway. So, yeah, and we just have a massive push for recovery at the moment because we, we see people um, on two ends of the spectrum, right? People who don't really like training, I'll turn up once or twice a week. Uh, yeah and do as little as possible basically um just to say that they've ticked a box and cool i can go to the gym happy days um, on Facebook. <laughs> and you know gp says it's okay because i went to the gym so yeah, yeah. I'm avoiding illness um whereas some people are there and like that they say you know they want to turn up twice a day sometimes for three sessions um two in a row yeah. I'm like, right i want to do this i want to do that i want to do more 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 like you said it's it's not necessarily a um a more is more principle um and no i always um sometimes i liken this to this is the best analogy that really hits with my women it's like less is more sometimes think about like these these females that wear too much makeup you're like what are you doing it looks terrible and then not enough is sometimes like oh you probably could have put a bit more you're in the middle right it's sometimes too yeah. much is worse um yeah. And you also got to think about why you're wanting to do more. If it's because you're not reaching your goals, it's probably because you're doing something else wrong rather than not training enough or you are not got the right programming. Maybe you need to reconsider what your program is, have a chat to your coach if that's something that you're looking at. Whereas like three times a day, all the time, depending like, especially if they're loading up through like weights training or like your, your nervous system is just going to be fried and then you're at risk of injury. So then you go backwards if you get injured. So yeah. it's like less is more sometimes um, most of the time actually that's a really uh, cool the people who are only training twice a week <laughs> yeah there, there's a balance right that's a really yeah. cool analogy actually because it's like from a guy's perspective it's always you know the makeup that isn't noticed but it's there but it, you don't notice the makeup's there it's like yeah oh, perfect and that's, that's, like, that's like the perfect combination it's like yeah. just enough too much you're like oh <laughs> yeah, exactly it's like okay cool cool cool, cool. what are you doing yeah. um and training's the same like it's just as you said that neurological input as well like that takes a lot out of you and the, the motivations behind needing to do more and quite often we've found that it's just a learning process like the the body needs time to recover the brain needs time to learn movements learn positions learn how to put that you know that extra muscle down and how to adapt the fascia and the connective tissue and all that sort of stuff to yeah it's neuroplasticity, right? And, you know, fascial plasticity to, to try and learn those movements. Um, super important. Are there any sort of, um, and tying this into um, recovery as well as nutrition, are there any sort of specific extra micronutrient considerations? So we're talking about the micro, we're talking about vitamins, minerals, little things like that. Not so much the, the supplementation, um, but we're talking about the hormonal changes. Is, is there anywhere they really need to concentrate on away just, just from the protein to really support their recovery? Oh, um, this is something that I have not gotten myself into trouble for, but because everyone is so different in what, how their body is affected or what their lifestyles are, um, giving like a blanket rule for that stuff can also sometimes be too bad, too much, because some people don't actually need more vitamin B. Some people do need more vitamin B. So if they go out and take it and then they get all these problems, it's like, could be worse. So 
that is something definitely like if they're struggling with energy or like really severe symptoms and they think like, am I missing something? Like that's something they definitely need to go see like more medical based because there is no real safe like blanket rule in terms of like go take this and maybe you'll feel better. Um, if you've addressed every other aspect of their health, uh, sleep, hydration, nutrition, um, like even just like mental health, uh, all of that stuff, and then there's still some issues, it's definitely like micronutrient-wise, there definitely could be stuff going on, but it's very dependent on what their, everything in their life Um uh, have a health, other health history, like other any, any other medical problems that they might have, supplements they might already be taking. Um, basically, whether they're on hormone replacement therapy, some of them will be. So that's I sort of stopped telling people that when I saw that it was actually causing some pro- people problems because they didn't actually need what they needed, or they were taking things and it wasn't doing anything for them and making them feel less. Um, I guess satisfied in like why isn't this working Um, so I would if there is issues I would definitely recommend like go and get like a blood test done or see someone that you trust um, whether that's a GP or whether you're into more naturopath type stuff I'm a bit more of that alternate medicine personally but um, if that you just go the direction that you like and they'll probably be able to give you way way more accurate advice and that would actually work for you as an individual yeah cool um, so specific advice, um, or, you know, I suppose generalized advice, really, um, if people are struggling, um, you know, someone is entering menopause or around that stage and they just can't handle the, the sweating at night, they just can't handle the, the, the weight gain and they feel like they're doing everything, they're training well, they're, they're, they feel like they're eating well, um, what would be your first sort of go-to recommendations um, just as a blanket sort of um, generalized advice to really look at? Um, I would, if they think they're doing everything right but they haven't actually sought out someone who knows a bit more about it, that would be my first point of call. So some, like, for example, some of my clients would come to me and say, I'm doing everything right. But when I actually break it down to them, like what they're doing, they're not doing the right thing, but they just weren't well enough educated in that area to, to make informed choices. Um, they all like a lot of them will go, Oh, I've just cut all my calories and I've stopped eating carbs. And um, like, I'm just doing all this exercise and I'm doing cardio and I just can't lose the weight. Like it's really affecting me. Um, all that type of stuff will also affect your other symptoms. So maybe you aren't actually doing the right thing. So sorting out someone who can actually give you some advice on have a look at what you're doing overall um, is probably the first step in terms of changing some sort of pattern in what you're doing. So whether that's like, hey, have you thought about like actually not cutting your calories down but focusing more on the type of food that you're having? Um, Some of the women at that age group, especially now, are in that old school mentality of like no fat diets as well. So getting them to eat fat, I don't know if you're experiencing this, but getting them to eat some sort of fat is sometimes even harder. And we all know, well, we don't all know, but we know that our hormone development comes from consumption of fats, especially like your omega-3s are so important. So if you're not eating any fat, you're going to have troubles with any sort of hormonal balancing anyway. So you might be looking at your diet like that, like, okay, maybe I'm not actually eating enough fats, but most of the time those women tend to cut them out because they think they're bad. So um, definitely reassessing what you're doing with someone if you haven't already seen anybody is probably the first step. Mm -hmm. Um, Make sure that person also does know something about it. So (laughs) do your research on the person. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So just see see anybody that you can find on the street that is just going to give you some random advice and it should be good, right? Yeah, or even like, you know, some some of these, like, um, I'm assuming that these guys are coming to you when you're <laughs> doing all this, but I've had people that are seeing other, just other trainers who aren't educated enough mm. that probably shouldn't be providing advice, but are just trying to kind of help, but they really know they don't know enough. And it's like, mm. those people should be referring out to, like, I can't help you. Go see someone who knows what they're doing a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but definitely working on stress levels, gut health and sleep patterns are going to work the wonders. So if you're not already looking at that, mm-hmm. that's, and you don't want to go see someone, those things I would go, am I having troubles with these? This is what I need to improve. That will make a difference for you. That's just good advice for anyone really. Like yeah. people are like <laughs> in a stressful state all the time. They're in a sympathetic state where their cortisol through the roof, adrenaline yeah. all the time. They're just not recovering. They're not resting. They're not digesting well. 
it's trying to get into that parasympathetic state where we can actually calm the body down um, is just a huge game changer in terms of recovery and training and fat yeah. loss and just balancing the body out. Yeah, I've had like clients who all we've done is basically teach them how to switch their nervous systems and they lose weight just from that. If that's not motivating, like who wants to, like if you could just lay down at night time and do some deep breathing for 10 minutes with the body scan and you lost weight from that, yeah. that's like, how good's that? Yeah, but it's all calories. Everything's calories. Oh yeah, don't forget, <laughs> cut your carbs. Yeah. <laughs> carbs are bad. Don't, don't actually do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, terrible. No, yeah. awesome. No, I think that answers a few questions. So a real food, not too much, mostly plants basically um, getting an awareness and an understanding of what you're actually doing and not just judging it as going, I think I'm doing the right things, but actually having an awareness of your weekly routine, mm-hmm. um, you know, track your workouts, track your calories um, or not even so much the numbers, but the types of food that you're having um, and just understand what, what food you're intaking. Um, and as you said, tracking your stress and your sleep um, and how you're feeling throughout the day, doing that for a couple of weeks and then getting some guidance on that would be huge for, for a lot of women who feel lost out there yeah that's awesome um so my next question is basically if if people want to sort of reach out to you where do they find you caught oh instagram you know the social game i'm not very good at instagram but it's yeah. pretty much where i'm at um my instagram handle is her exercise physiology um chuck me a follow if you're interested in some more information i'm definitely posting more educational stuff on there that people are more than welcome to follow i'm happy for people to email me too they'll have like a link to my website on that instagram as well otherwise my website is www.healthexerciserehab.com.au that's my um information there i'm happy to do like um reach out to anyone if anyone wants to do like you guys are where are you again uh we're in sangay that's right yeah 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 um online stuff i'm going to do um offering online consults for people too that need some more advice based stuff as well if they need some help looking at things like their routines or whatever really so yeah feel free to reach out or just learn some more off the stuff that i'm posting you know that's where it's at at the moment awesome good nice to catch yeah. up yeah i know it's been too long thanks for your time no worries thank you we'll see you soon okay bye